Hi, this is Larry Dignan from Constellation Insights, and we're here with Constellation Research CEO Ray Wong, and we're going to talk about Apple Vision Pro and whether it's going to save the metaverse or worse. <laughs> hey, Ray, thanks for joining us. Hey, great joining you here, live here from CES in Las Vegas. We're here on day zero of CES, uh, but you can see there's a lot of activity behind me. And, and it, it's funny, first day of CES, Apple comes out with, hey, here's our pre-orders and here's the Vision Pro due on February 2nd. I got to admit, I'm, I'm really on the fence about this one part. The cynic in me is like, get out of here. This is insane. And then I, the never optimist been to one in me, these. which is probably not this much. Um, you don't like going to conferences. No, it's good. <laughs> yeah. So then the optimist in me thinking this is, you know, could be interesting. Um, what do you think it all means? Well, it's interesting, right? We, we have a model that's coming at $34.99. Um, it's going to be interesting. People will need lenses, uh, prescriptions. Zeiss is going to provide those lenses. You can pre-order them this Friday, um, and they're going to start shipping on the 2nd. I think that's very interesting. A lot of people think Apple was going to deliver on this product announcement. And, and the fact is, it's ready to go, and it's now consumer grade. So you get a 4K display. Um, it's AR and VR. You can always look through as you need to. It's using an M2 chip and the new R1 chip, which is basically built for sensors and cameras and microphones and gestures. And of course, you know, you can use head, hand tracking and voice uh, to really get this going. So I think it's going to be interesting. We're starting to see things like spatial video pop that are allowed for the recording uh, and of course you know the battery pack is still separate it's going to be connected uh, it's, that's probably the heaviest part and the clunkiest part of it but this product is actually coming out and is on sale which is unbelievable to almost everybody who did not think this product would be coming out the, out the door so speaking of on sale uh you know, at the price tag it is more than three thousand dollars. I, you know, I can see developers getting the tax deduction for the expense. Enterprises will expense it. What do you think the right price point will be ultimately to get you know mass adoption? Well, I think we have to really look at this as a replacement for computing in general, the MacBook, right? You're not buying a screen. It's infinite screens, right? You're not buying a keyboard accessory. You're typing. You're using eye tracking. You're using voice and gestures. Uh, you've got a, a real chip in there. It's an M2 chip. This is not like some you know puny underpowered chip that people were putting in their headsets before. So, so this ultimately is the replacement for a MacBook and all the accessories. And, you know, Apple Finance, I'm sure, is figuring out that Unicom cost economics that they have to price it at 3500 But I think you're going to see different slices and different capabilities over time. Just like you have a MacBook and you have an iPad, which is a different use case, uh, and you actually have an iPhone, which is a different use case, you're going to see different derivatives over time that will probably be pre-priced at 2000 at 2500 3000 35 and of course, there'll probably be some supermodel at 5000 that works differently. So this is going to be a race to getting to miniaturization, lowering power consumption, improving AI, trying to improve these capabilities, right? And that's what Apple typically does in their product development engineering cycle. So what do you think this does for the metaverse? I mean, there's one, you know, there's one argument that it, it kind of makes it more popular and brings it back from the dead. There's the other one, if this flops, maybe it just puts that final nail in the coffin of the whole idea. I guess, how, how do you see it playing out? And Or is it just Apple's world and it doesn't impact the rest of the you know, metaverse economy, so to speak. Well, you laid out very compelling scenarios. One is if this doesn't work, nobody else is going to do it again. Nobody has the ability to make that level of investment. Uh, but I think Apple was intending to make this work and they want the metaverse to be successful and this, see this as the spatial computing is the future of computing and we're going to head in that direction. Uh, but if there's anyone to make it happen, it wasn't going to be Facebook. It was going to be Apple because of the monetization model that Apple has for developers and the ability to actually get developers and the ecosystem excited about building something that they will be profitable on. So what we actually have is the situation where you can have early adopters and these early adopters are going to jump in and they're going to be developers, they're going to show the use cases, they're going to be early adopters in the enterprise, they're going to put all that together and once they have that, then we'll get to a point where we'll be able to say, okay, the next level of users will join in, the ecosystem will build from there and the software development ecosystem will then completely come in place so the enterprise the consumer and of course the partnerships will be in play and those ecosystems will come in what use cases do you think will kick off first 
Yeah, I think the use cases that are going to be important are really in academia, where people are going to explore and look at scientific experiments, trying to understand molecules, where DNA fits into place. Uh, if you look at what's happening in uh, training, that's going to be another place where people actually experience things. They're going to be able to actually do simulations. Uh, we're also going to see gaming is also going to be a use case that's going to play a role. And of course, entertainment is, is probably the big use case uh, that everyone's going to start with. Uh, but I think you're going to see a wide range of all the areas where we looked at metaverse AR use cases in the past, like anything from being able to decompose uh, something, you know, for a repair on a field service trip uh, to being able to be on the factory floor and actually using those goggles to actually troubleshoot uh, issues that you wouldn't have seen before. All right. And then final question. Are you buying one? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> I'll put my order in on Friday. <laughs> nice. All righty. Well, thanks for joining us. Have fun. All right. Hey, thanks a lot. See you from CS. Yeah.